almost 11, it's so cloudy. What is up guys, Manny B here with the Skinny Water Boys. Today I got a little treat for y'all guys. I'm gonna be trying to show y'all how I throw the Working Class Zero Citizen, the seven inch one, on the river, and how I work it, how it's supposed to look, kind of how I think it looks supposed to look in the river. And if you wanna know how to rig it, I'm gonna link uh, Mike Gilbert's channel below with a video link to it, and he shows perfect. He's the one who makes the bait, so I don't wanna take any credit for this bait or anything like that. It's an awesome bait, all around bait. So make sure to check it out guys, and then, yeah, let's get on some fish. Hopefully, well, let's hope. Get on some fish, or I'm just gonna show y'all how to use it, or how I use it. So hopefully it helps you out. Let me know in the comments below if how you use it, or how where you like to throw it, and where you think it works best. But see y'all in a little bit. All right, guys, I totally forgot to show you. This is what the citizen looks like. Very, very soft. Look at that. That's the type of, uh, you know, play you want in your paddle tail swim baits. This is the gray pearl. Boom. These two, check out your forage. Make sure you're matching the hatch. So if you don't have any of these guys, gray ones, but you have purple ones, get the purple. There's gold ones as well. Check them out. And then make sure... As you can see, see how there's a lot, of, there's some space under here. That's a 10 knot owner beast with a half ounce belly weight. This is probably like an eight knot. Seems like they don't really make, they don't think they, I don't think they make nine knots. But I got this one from uh, a buddy named Nick Reese. Appreciate you. But you put a too small of a hook. <laughs> and then also major key is you bend the hook up. I did a little bit extra, as you can see it's pointing up a little too much, but you, what you wanna do is make it flush because when you get these hooks out of the package, they're, they point down and they, they bite into the bait. And that's, that's a no-no for when you're swim baiting, with, when you're targeting big, big bait, or big, big bass. All right guys, so what I like to do, say there's a dock right there, that's obviously something where a, a big bass or any bass could be holding up. And what you want to do is you get a little get parallel with the bank and make a long cast past it and then try to bring it just under if you can bring it underneath or just outside of that dock and hey there's a fish there and he's hungry they might get it sort of like this boom crap let it go down a little bit and just start reeling i do a slow slow reel or moderate reel, I would say, like a stutter step in the reel handle. And this wind is in the. It's a lot harder to fish swim baits in a kayak with the wind. Throw it back in there. So watch my reel handle. There we go. I had a follower. They're definitely interested in the bait. And so you got all these roots right here, a perfect drop off. You kind of want to find the perfect medium. There's no like right or wrong way to where to cast, but I'll throw kind of right in the center of the drop off. Use anything you can to readjust. Trust me, because you will want to do it. Sometimes you do not want to stop reeling because it'll mess up the the feel or the look of the bay. And it doesn't hurt to do a couple casts. 
you, it's not just though this is a bait you don't want to do just one and done most of the time maybe go a little further go a little in and what you're really trying to do is mimic the gizzard shad that you see in the water so what I'd highly highly suggest doing make sure you first have gizzard shad in the water and then also study them watch them when you're on the water maybe you just go out observe them for a little bit and see how they swim because I think gizzard shad all swim differently in different bodies of water but they're all the same fish because I've seen some just like a steady steady swim then other ones are just like zah, 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 like zigzagging all over the place they're looking looking crazy so make sure you're fishing it like what you see and this thing is pretty was it Mike what Mike Gilbert says it's snag less not stag less but less so I can pull this through some pretty good cover as long as you have the your hooks rigged up right oh gosh this do this brush pile and sometimes you want to just be real erotic with it real crazy with it because that's what these gizzard shad are they're sometimes unpredictable the way they swim messed up but let's see what happens boom that was a beautiful skip Only there was a big bass waiting for it. Just goosh. So, and then swim baiting, all about angles. Strategic casting is major key. That's a big bass. See? That was a good one. Came out from under there. I saw me. Just did. The wind's blowing me forward, which you don't want. You always want to get your position because you'll blow up a spot if you don't position your kayak. They do it the same thing in boats where they get the position. It's kind of like those uh, those deals where you're in school and you're like, when am I ever going to use this? It's honestly, I the way I looked at it was, it's critical thinking in how you're going to figure out that problem. So you got to use the same scenarios in this. So how are you going to figure out how you're going to position your boat? Boom, get your position. How you can lined up? You're going to throw over those lily pads to the right, close to that brush pile. Boom, and then if you have to wait for the wind, wait for the wind because you want you don't want to mess up a cast. Look at that right here. Boom. And put your leg in the water to slow yourself down. Hey, that's a clutch move right here in the shallows. And there's a drop off right there. So it's just like an invitation for a big bass. A freaking tank. The hook never came out. Get back in there, there might be another one. I was doing pretty much what I was saying, throwing past the cover, and the current was pushing against that big old pillar, and then I let the current take it and just smack the, the the pillar and sure enough that big bass was just hanging out right there waiting for something like that to happen and boom she got it and then I think I had a I didn't have a good hook set because she was just on she just like choked like slurped it up I just felt pressure and then I reeled back and set the hook but it just wasn't good enough or she didn't have it all the way in her mouth I don't know Holy sh Oh 
Ooh. Shit. Bro. 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 That was a nine pound bass. That was the one. Alrighty guys, so that's a wrap for the video. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'm not gonna put in all the boring parts, but I'm gonna put in the parts where I'm talking about how I'm throwing it, why I'm throwing it there, giving my, my own explanation, and then the spot, uh, and then like I put that to use, what I was talking about, and then I hooked into a big vest, and then lost it, sadly, but hey, it worked. So hopefully it works for you. Let me know in the comments what you think, and what have you tried, and what swim baits that you should uh, try to start off with because you don't want to start getting into like the big big ones too early on because the next thing you know you're going to be just not knowing what you're doing so there's different lures that you need to know how to use before you start using swim baits in my opinion and what i mean by that is like chatter baits spinner baits uh anything that you have to have you know a good angle crank baits stuff like that so if you haven't mastered any of those things or gotten good at those or figured out why they work, I would suggest, highly suggest doing that first. Then, when you feel comfortable and ready to move on, I would definitely, definitely get into the swim bait game. Because, tell you what, your pocketbook's going to be hurting unless you're made of money. So, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next episode. Peace out. Thanks for the love. Appreciate y'all. Oh, forget, if you aren't subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, notification bell on. I've noticed a lot of you guys that are watching the videos are not subscribed. So please do me a favor, subscribe, help me out, and it helps me know that I'm doing something right. And give it a thumbs up. Hey, see y'all next episode.